Welcome back to Telephone Tuesdays here at This Museum Is Not Obsolete. I'm Mitch. We previously talked about these things, selectors, and today I'm going to show you how to properly remove them, that is, jack them in and out in proper parlance from the exchange racks. The need to jack in and out these selectors highlights an important design consideration of these step-by-step -step automatic exchanges because things inevitably are going to break and you need to take them out to fix them. The telephone exchange can't shut down for maintenance. Subscribers pay for a service and they won't be happy if it goes offline. Therefore, there is redundancy built into the system and the step-by-step -step route that calls take through the exchange can automatically avoid the broken equipment. These two motion selectors are some of the more complicated devices in the exchange and as such are more likely to malfunction. The ability to quickly jack in and out these selector switches means you can replace them with one that's working and then take this over to the workbench to fix it. The first thing you need to do is busy the selector. That tells the rest of the equipment that it's not available and takes it out of the circuit. That means that the wiper carriage isn't going to suddenly start moving up while you're unjacking it. All right, let's call in the cavalry. I need an expert to tell me how to do the first step. Sammy boy, where are you? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say expert, but I'm a blivin' an idiot that's trying his hardest might be more apt. Yeah, so... What, what's going on? So what I want to do is make sure that uh, nobody can call this switch while I'm working on it. How do I get this to tell everything else that it's busy and unavailable? Well, 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 you know how to do it. It's just we were not sure exactly where to put the, 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 the finger magoop after it got pulled out. So the, what would you do? This U-link here, yeah. So which is normally in uh, points 13 and 14. Point 13 and 14, yeah. yes. That's connecting the battery yep. to the private wire. So you right. can look here. If we look, this is the schematic of the group selector for the UX13. So this gobbledygook right there is this thing right there. So um, when you disconnect this red wire, uh, what that does is uh, it basically takes this right there, that's the little red wire there. We take the thing out of there and it stops the battery being connected to the P wire, which is the wire that tells the rest of the telephone exchange that this is ready to take a phone call or something like that. But what we're not sure about is like you pull it out, you just pop it to the side, just leave it like that. However, you said in tele telephony volume two, mm -hmm. what does it say? says you should move the the U-link to point seven and eight, which are underneath. Yeah, so what point seven and eight does, we've just looked at the schematic again, what seven and eight does, which is, I've lost it, uh, <laughs> where has it gone? It's there, it's there. What that does is it takes the P wire, it says P, this is usually connected via the B relay, over to the this one right there we just pulled it out of, but that actually connects it to Earth. So what you're doing is you're taking the P wire, disconnecting it from battery and plugging it into Earth. So maybe it's just safer. Maybe we're just being idiots. What do you reckon? I reckon safe. Maybe this is sorry. the standard. Maybe this is the standard protocol, mm. but maybe people were too darn lazy to it. Maybe we'd like, I think that sounds about right to me. Oh, anyway, I'll let you get on with it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Handily, there's normally one of those U-links parked here in contacts 13 and 14. You just move it down and the switch is busied. You also want to take out this little green uh, U-link because that is connecting the circuit to the vertical magnet, which is the bit that causes this to step up. And you don't want it to be accidentally stepping up while you're moving the switch out because that will be bad. Can you see these things down here? Those are the wipers. And that is what goes up and across the bank of contacts. And if they are not on their normal level, that is at the bottom, if they're off normal like this and even inside the bank, when you try and jack out the selector, they're all going to get bent and broken and you don't want that. So make sure they're in the correct position so you don't damage them. Okay, and we also need to make sure that the vertical marker has been moved out of the way. That's this little bit here, it pivots around, just put it there so it's out of the way when you're jacking the selector out. Okay, so you want to get a solid grip on it, one hand at the bottom, one hand at the top, and then all you do is just push it up like that and then pivot it out towards the front. And hey presto, there it is. 
Now that the selector's out, we can have a good look at all the electrical connections at the back of the cradle. These are the shelf jacks. These index with the selector jacks and collectively they're known as U-points. And you can see now that I've got the selector out, how it actually uh, jacks into the cradle here because there's a little point here which uh, indexes with this down here. And there's a bit here that indexes with the little bayonet there. So it's the reverse action to jack them back in. You just uh, slot the bottom in first like that then index that with the slot and push it down. So there you go. Now I've told you all this trusting that you won't come here and nick all of our selectors. But we'd love to see you here on an open day. And if you want to support the museum, you can click on the Patreon link down in the description. I've been Mitch. This is Telephone Tuesdays. See you next Tuesday.